welcome to the next video on theory of the machines in today's lecture we will see the analysis of clutch based on the uniform pressure theory and uniform wear theory in the previous lecture we have already seen about the construction and working of the clutch as we have seen in the last video that the torque that, that can be transmitted by the clutch is given by mu f axial into rm into n where mu is the clutch lining friction coefficient f axial is the axial force that is applied on the clutch plate it is the force by which the clutch plate is remains in contact with the flywheel rm is the mean radius or the average radius and n is the number of friction surfaces or the number of discs the torque that can be transmitted by a clutch is a function of its geometry and the magnitude of the actuating force applied as well as the condition of the contact prevailing between the members the geometry means the dimensions what will be the inner radius and the outer radius similarly the magnitude of the actuating force that means the axial force which is applied to keep the clutch plate in contact with the flywheel and also the contact prevailing between the members that means depending on the clutch lining friction coefficient the applied force can keep the members together with a uniform pressure all over its contact area and the consequent analysis based on uniform pressure condition however as the time progresses some wear takes place between the contacting members and this may alter or vary the contact pressure appropriately and uniform pressure condition may no longer prevail hence the analysis here is based on uniform wear condition so the analysis of clutch will be based on either uniform pressure theory and uniform wear theory depending on the condition of the clutch if the clutch is new then the pressure will be distributed uniformly throughout the friction lining but if the clutch is old then the wear will take place so uniform wear theory will be applied let us see the elementary analysis first let us consider a clutch plate with friction lining so this is the clutch plate and these are the friction lining this is the side view let us draw the front view this is the outer radius r1 and this is the inner radius r2 and suppose we consider a elemental area circular elemental area at the radius r end of thickness dr then we will see the effect on this elemental circular area and then we'll integrate for the total area of the friction line that is from r2 to r1 now r1 is the external radius of the friction lining on the clutch plate r2 is the internal radius of the friction lining on the clutch plate you can see here in this figure f axial is the axial force applied on the clutch plate mu is the clutch lining coefficient of friction p is the intensity of pressure and tc is the torque transmitted by the clutch this axial force will be acting in this direction in the normal direction right so this actual force will be applied due to the diaphragm spring which is actually keeping the clutch plate in contact with the flywheel during the time of engagement and due to that axial force this pressure will be applied on these friction lines now let us consider this circular ring of radius r and thickness dr and the area of this circular ring will be 2 pi r into the thickness tr will be the area of the circular element next the axial force on this circular element will be area into the pressure so p is the pressure we have considered and 2 pi r dr is the area so the axial force will be p 2 pi r dr now the frictional force on the circular element will be axial force into the coefficient of friction so df will be equal to mu p 2 pi r into dr now the torque that can be transmitted by the elemental area is equal to the frictional force times the moment arm 
about the axis that is this is the axis the moment arm is r so that is the radius r so the torque frictional torque transmitted by the circular element is given by dt is equal to mu p 2 pi r dr this is the frictional force into this moment arm that is r so finally we are getting dt is equal to mu p 2 pi r square dr now this is the elementary analysis moving ahead let us first consider the uniform pressure condition for the uniform pressure condition the pressure at all the points in the friction lining will be constant so if the pressure is constant then we can directly say that the pressure will be equal to the axial force applied divided by the area of the friction lining that will be this will be area of the outer circle will be pi r1 square minus the area of the inner circle pi r2 square so this will give you the area of the friction lining now integrating the axial force or the normal force between the limits of the inner radius r1 and the outer radius r2 we get the actuating force that need to be applied to transfer the torque so total axial force applied on the clutch plate will be integration of r2 to r1 p 2 pi r dr so p is constant so we we'll take it outside so p into 2 pi will be taken outside so it will be integration from r2 to r1 r dr so integration of r dr gives us r square upon 2 putting the value of limits r1 and r2 we get the total axial force applied on the clutch plate as pi p r1 square minus r2 square right now the total torque that can be transmitted is obtained by integrating the equation of dt by the limits of inner radius r1 and the outer radius r2 as follows the total torque transmitted by the friction surface t is equal to integration from r2 to r1 mu p 2 pi r square dr this was the equation of dt so again 2 pi mu p is constant so it has been taken outside and integration of r square dr will be given as r q upon 3 so putting the values of limit we have the total torque transmitted by the frictional surface in case of uh, uniform pressure condition is 2 pi mu p r1 cube minus r2 cube upon 3 which is equal to 2 pi mu by keeping the value of p from this equation p is equal to f axial upon pi r1 square minus r2 square we have the to total torque transmitted by the frictional surface as 2 by 3 mu f axial r1 cube minus r2 cube divided by r1 square minus r2 square as you can see it from here this can be further written as the generalized equation t is equal to mu f xl into rm where rm is equal to this remaining factor that is rm is equal to 2 by 3 r1 cube minus r2 cube divided by r1 square minus r2 square so this is the total torque transmitted by the frictional surface right next let us see for the uniform wear theory now according to some established theories the wear in a mechanical system is proportional to pv factor where p refers to the contact pressure and v is the sliding velocity based on this for a case of a plate clutch we can state that the constant wear rate rw is assumed to be proportional to the product of p into v so rw is proportional to pv and that is constant and the velocity at the point on the face of the clutch v is equal to r omega assuming constant angular velocity we can write that p into r is a constant suppose it is c now again the total axial force applied on the clutch plate can again be calculated as previous by integrating the df from the limits r2 to r1 as follows so f axial is integration of r2 to r1 p 2 pi r dr which will be equal to r2 to r1 now we can keep the value of p from here as c upon r so 2 pi r dr now c is constant so we will take it outside 2 pi is constant so we take it outside then r and r cancel out 
so integration of dr is r in the limits r1 to r2 so we'll keep the limits so we get total axial force applied on the clutch plate as 2 pi c r1 minus r2 in case of uniform wear condition next we'll find out the total torque transmitted by the frictional surface so t is equal to integration from r2 to r1 as we have done it previously mu p 2 pi r square dr this is dt so this will be again equal to we will keep the value of p here again so r2 to r1 mu c by r 2 pi r square dr r and r will be cancelling out we will take out 2 pi mu and c as constant so we will take it outside and integration of r will give us r square upon 2 in the limits r1 and r2 so this will finally give us t is equal to 2 pi mu c r1 square minus r2 square upon 2 further in the value of c from this f axial equation here so c will be equal to f axial divided by 2 pi r1 minus r2 so keeping the value of c from here in this equation we get total torque transmitted by friction surface as 2 pi mu f axial upon 2 pi r1 minus r2 into r1 square minus r2 square divided by 2 2 and 2 will cancel out pi and pi will cancel out so finally the total torque transmitted by the friction surface in case of uniform wear condition will be mu f axial r1 plus r2 divided by 2 so again writing in this in the generalized form we have t is equal to mu f axial rm where rm is equal to r1 plus r2 divided by 2 so this is how we calculate the total torque transmitted by the frictional surface in case of uniform wear condition now let us let us find out the total torque transmitted by the clutch plate the total torque transmitted by the clutch plate as we have seen earlier is given by mu into f axial into rm into n where n is the number of frictional surfaces for single plate clutch n will be equal to 2 and similarly for the multi plate clutch also n can be calculated now this rm this equation will be same for both the conditions uniform wear condition also and uniform pressure condition also only the value of rm will be different so the value of rm in case of uniform pressure condition is given by rm 2 by 3 r1 cube minus r2 cube <coughs> divided by r1 square minus r2 square as we have derived earlier and similarly for uniform wear condition rm is r1 plus r2 by 2 so this is how we find out the total torque transmitted by the clutch in both the conditions of uniform. I hope you have understood the derivation and in the next lecture we will apply these equations to solve the numerical problem. Thank you.